Okay, so we're going to talk about how to position a patient and to mark out uh, a thoracotomy incision, specifically a posterior lateral or a posterior muscle sparing thoracotomy. So what you have here is just a diagram of what a patient would look like, and there's a few things that you need to point out. Um, the first thing is where the bump occurs. Um, the bump on the table, let me do it in black here so you can see it a little bit better. The bump on the table, or where you're going to flex the table, should be just above the anterior iliac crest. So you should get the anterior iliac crest just below the location of the bump. The next thing is the axillary roll. So the axillary roll is right here. Now it's called an axillary roll, but in actuality it isn't an axillary roll. It's actually more of a chest roll because it shouldn't be in the axilla. It should actually be below the axilla. You should be able to get three to four fingers between the roll and the axilla. Uh, otherwise, if it gets into the axilla, you'll get a brachial plexopathy. Now, what you can do with the arms uh, is up to you. We usually put our arms uh, into a uh, airplane splint that holds this arm straight out in this direction rather than curving over the head. The left arm is usually bent at the elbow and directed north as well. Down here on the feet, what you want to make sure is that you make the letter the number four. So the bottom foot should be oriented like this. And then the top foot should be over the top of it, straight down. Like that. So you get sort of the number four there. And that way the more broadly placed leg is against the table. Alright. So that's positioning. Oh, and the last thing is the tape. You can put a little tape. I usually put my tape right here. Not really off the crest. I'll actually put it over the bursa. Uh, but some people also do put it on top of uh, the anterior iliac crest. And that tape keeps them from rolling. What about marking out the incision? When you're marking out the incision, there's a couple of landmarks that you look for. Obviously, you have the scapula which is right around here, let's say. In addition, you have the spine with the spinous processes going right up the midline over here into the neck. So the way that I mark it out is I try and pick a spot about one to two centimeters. So this distance is about one to two centimeters below the tip of the scapula. And then you want to aim for a spot right here, which is for the inferior, inferior mammary fold. And then over here, of course, you want to be directly between the spine and the uh, scapula. Now, the question is for a posterior muscle sparing thoracotomy, I usually want to identify a point here at the top of the oscillatory triangle. And the way I do that is I find the most medial point on the spine of the uh, scapula, a point on the spine right here, a point on the spine right about here. And the idea is to create an equilateral triangle. And so if you create this equilateral triangle, this spot right here marks the most medial extent of your posterior thoracotomy incision. And then you just make a curving incision here to about one centimeter below to two centimeters below the tip of the scapula. And this should be pointing towards, if you want to extend this, this would then sort of curve out towards the inferior mammary fold. And so in the end, you get sort of an S-shaped incision bounded at the top by this point created by this equilateral triangle. At the bottom, you're usually at the posterior axillary line. So 
So this right here is about the posterior axillary line. And you're aiming for the inferior mammary fold. And this spot right here is about one to two centimeters below the tip of the scapula.